Welcome, this is Zangler, the Tesla semi-advocate. And I am not a semi-advocate, but I am an advocate for the Tesla semi. And this video was taken March 4th, and it's been a minute before I could get the production done due to technical difficulties with my equipment. In any event, we um, start this uh, drone flight with a few still shots. This is the northwest corner. You can see it's a nice non-windy day. The flag there is not moving at all. And uh, there is uh, the title of this uh, video is Trench Warfare. And you will see later what I mean. There's always, there's always a certain amount of trench work being done, as you can see there. And um, also, I think what I've noticed, and I would love to see if you viewers agree, they have backfilled these loading docks to the right and uh, brought the level up. And I have always noticed that they need that they were planning on bringing in more dirt and backfilling this whole northern area because the um, the uh, manhole covers were like a foot and a half above grade, uh, protruding up a foot and a half above grade. More trenching right there. And um, one of the things that we'll see later is apparently they are bringing in electricity from multiple sources. And I don't know if that's because of the power demands and or because they want uh, they don't want a single source of failure, single point of failure, or a little bit of both. You can see the those uh, black segmented stuff paths on the uh, roof are not spelling semi or iwes as we some jokingly like to uh, refer to the uh, semi branding on the roof if you look at it from the north it says iwes if you look at it from the south it says semi here is the door that you saw you may have seen the recent tesla video with four semis driving inside the factory and then exiting that, I believe it was that door. There are, there are three candidate doors that could have been. There's three of those huge doors. And I'll have to take a look again, and maybe you viewers can opine, but I think it was that door. Here is a lot of the trenching. This, this trenching, um, as we've seen from the past previous videos, and it, it, it certainly helps the channel if you go back and watch them, I have put together a... Um, a list on YouTube where you could just watch, you can watch like six or seven consecutive videos, not going back as far as I've been flying the drone, but going back a little bit. And I'll, I'll add to that. And every once in a while I do a, um, a, uh, transition or, or a time lapse. Anyway, all this trenching is, um, not the main trenching that I speak of. I don't know, are those, do those look like uh, HVAC units that are going to go on the roof, or are they going to stay there? Now we follow up, there, there's a power, there's a heavy duty, high voltage, <clears throat> variable, variable, I'm not sure if that's a word, um, power lines that you can see that come up to this junction box. Two boxes, three power lines on the right lower and two high voltage power lines on the upper left. And um, they go to different locations. And the uh, and we're gonna follow along these trenches. The three, the, three, um, the three power lines are buried as of right here. And it's interesting to see two Model Ys there um, as basically work vehicles. Electri electricians maybe driving those colorful Model Ys. Anyway, you can see the one the one power line, the one trench it has been buried, and I believe it continues up where those little uh, that little ditch is. But then the one on the left is the one we're going to follow. And one of the viewers, I had speculated maybe this one was going to go to a um, mega charger. Uh, array field and um, uh, one of the one of the viewers 
pointed out that it's heading over to a substation. And I had thought that, again, that it wouldn't be needed because they have power coming in from other sources. But it is, in fact, as we're about to find out, it does, in fact, the trench has been continued. The trench warfare continues. And the trench um, has uh, progressed over to the south towards the um, existing substation that feeds uh, Giga Nevada proper, Legacy Giga Nevada. So those two power lines go over to a, an existing substation, and just maybe those three lines, oh, look, there, there, there's three and two right there. So they must have already buried the three. Interesting. I do believe that they, this is a, excellent candidate for um, a mega pack array and I um, don't know if that's on the if that is on the horizon here's a good look at Giga legacy Giga Nevada um, we only fly over here because we're tra following this trench and now we're going to head over to the big pit to the big stamping pit action and there's a lot of progress that has been made there matriculating our way over. Took a few still shots first. You may or may not have noticed the um, Tesla Semi is still standing guard overlooking this project. And now we're going to zoom in, fly on over to the um, stamping pit and see what's going on. The first thing you can notice is a lot of concrete has been poured into those footings since last time. Those were empty holes with rebar, many of them. And um, it looks to me like the uh, perimeter of the stamping building, Section G, will start out as the, at the same dimensions as um, Section F, and then and then jog out wider on both sides, as we've seen in the rendering. The other discussion we've been having with viewers is, are these going to be the same steel um, columns that support the building and same steel structure as the um, existing sections A through F, or are they going to be concrete columns? And at least there on the left, you could see that their concrete does extend partially up. And um, hopefully we'll get another look real quick. So it does look like those will, that those are built, these footings are built for, um, for steel plates and um, steel columns. Uh, but time, time will tell. And maybe it'll be a mixture of both. Wouldn't, make, wouldn't be surprising. One of the other big changes from last week is even more backfilling, especially of the largest stamping pit there. That's about the same amount of backfilling on the uh, southern stamping pit, but right here on the northern largest stamping pit, you can see they've brought in a lot of dirt and filled all the way around that section. And as you know, it's hollow uh, space underneath there. And here's a truck dropping more um, fill, fill dirt. Here's what I mean by the, the, that foundation, that long concrete foundation is right at the um, perimeter of the existing building, but then it looks like it jogs out, as you can see up above, and it has to, it has to go north and south to, to cover the full uh, extent of the stamping pits. And we've seen that in the rendering where the stamping pit is wider than the um, far western perimeter extends out. Here they're, um, this was a, this is a little stamping pit that they built very quickly, started it and finished it and have, and have now backfilled it and watering it. What's it like 10% moisture equals 90% compaction. Very important to water, have some moisture in the soil when you compact it. And um, that's what they're doing right there. 
a lot of complicated work still to be done in this stamping pit in order to um, and those are the concrete those are the concrete columns that um, are at least partially going to be concrete as opposed to metal but they do stop and perhaps metal will go on top of that we can, we'll see if there's plates um, attached to the top of those concrete columns there in the middle right pretty fascinating work here the engineering is amazing to me and here's the one crane that they've been using to, to lower in forms and this has been a the best crane is no crane type of project uh, they were able to build the entire main building section A through F without the use of cranes until it came to the um, insulated roofing material and I always have always speculated that the roofing supplier paid for that crane as the delivery contract was delivered to the roof and it would appear and the, the crane for that for, for putting the roofing materials on the roof was it would that crane would appear and, and disappear as as supplies were delivered and each section of the building was uh, was worked on here is the big dog Tesla semi what looking um, standing guard looking over as you recall they had left an Easter egg on top that got blown off and I always like to every now and then I check to see if there's anything new you notice there's big fat tires on the rear axles those are called super singles and um, there are advantages and disadvantages to running these on semis um, and I bet you Tesla is testing all combinations to, to gather data on what is more efficient what is more cost effective in terms of maintenance and replacement um, EV trucks like EV vehicles are harder on tires than um, regular internal combustion engines because of the weight and the torque and I do like the perspective this gives um, of the factory behind it once they're done with this standing guard running pulling security duty like a great Pyrenees watching over the flock of sheep I would be glad to take delivery of this and um, somehow put it to use I guess this one wouldn't work for my idea of having a Tesla semi wrecker wrecking service you would need a long axle a long frame box truck sort of version to build a uh, wrecker and then a Tesla semi could um, tow all the broken down diesel semis along I-80 just a mile or two away from this um, factory look at all that rebar and uh, as you can see those are concrete um, columns although now that I look at it those those columns only come up to ground level so those are just basic heavy-duty footings and not columns and they will reach the they look like they reach ground level and from there I can't wait to see but probably some big burly columns and we'll we should see the steel delivery for that shortly if that's true and then I wonder if the um, if they are going to use the same construction technique then the BZI Mesmaster which is no longer on site would have to be redelivered and uh, I don't see that as a huge problem again I've mentioned in the past that the Giga Semi production could begin the ramp could begin using supplier stamped parts the same as the pilot production line uses and while they are dialing in the rest of the assembly line production line then they could um, start stamping their own parts and um, calibrating them to the supplier provided parts
and um, that'll be very interesting to see if that's how they if, that, if that's how they do it. It would certainly explain why the main part of the building was completed well in advance of the stamping pit, and they didn't even start digging or working on the stamping pit until I think mid December, when the rest of the building was largely complete. You can see the geotextile material and the backfill. And um, this is where the, you, there were uh, sewer or uh, drainage manhole covers that uh, stuck above the grade. And I believe now they're going to um, fill it so that, that they're going to bring in a lot of fill. And by the way, look at those tanks. Those look like those, those tanks are new. And um, now we're just going to take a nice look around. It's a beautiful day in the high desert of Nevada, about 4,000 feet. This is a new twin, twin um, fulfillment center buildings that are going to be similar to the, uh, the ones adjacent to it and similar to the one Tesla leases for the pilot production line. Legacy Gig in Nevada in the background, a beautiful evening, and thanks for joining.